look at these old lights. And in a room we all use, too. That's not the kind of a light for a room like this. Why, the whole school spends most of its recreation time right here. We need better lights, and, and this is our chance to get them. If we can put this party across. In order to do that, we're going to have to write some pretty effective copy. So I wrote down these rules. Aw, oh, Jack, what do we need rules for? Haven't we spent enough time on this? Here, we have everything we need right here. The information on the different types of lighting. The principal's letter giving us permission to use the profits from our party to buy new lights. And the tickets. Bright Light Night. That's a good name for the party. It'll be easy to put that over. Come on, let's get busy and write. No, I think Jack's right. What we say and how we say it is important. We'll have to sell a lot of tickets in order to pay for these new lights. So let's be sure we do it right. But Alice, you have all the information you need for your poster, don't you? Yes. So we... That's all I need, too. Boy, this technical information on lighting will make a wonderful news story. Well, I guess it's all the information I need to write an announcement to be read in the home rooms, but... But are we sure this is accurate information? Sure we are. We've checked it. It's accurate, all right. Well, then, I suppose we have material complete and accurate. But according to these principles of effective writing we studied in English class, we, we can't stop there. Complete and accurate material. Well, that's all right. Next, audience, consider it. Well, who is our audience? Who's going to read what we write? How can we interest them? Oh, that's easy. Everybody will be interested in new lights. They all know how much we need more light. Why, just think who uses this room. Lots of folks use the arts and crafts bench. They'd certainly understand why we'd need new lights. And those who use the bookshelf, they'd be interested in helping to get better lights. And have you ever seen anybody try to play the piano in this room? They'd want new lights. Why, everybody would. I don't know, Clyde. Some just come here to sit and talk. And some don't use the social room at all. They probably haven't noticed the poor lights. Yes. How can we interest them? I see. Maybe we do have to consider our audience. Well, won't everybody be interested in bright light night? Yes, let's hope so. Then I guess we should consider the varied interests of our audience. They'll all enjoy the party, and some of them will want to help to get the new lights. Purpose, be clear. Well, I guess we're all set. All right. Our purpose is to sell tickets for the bright light night. Let's get to work. Not so fast, Jack. Our purpose was to buy new lights. No, our writing is to make the party a success. That's right, but we wouldn't have any party except Maybe for... Maybe you're both right. What do you think of this? Our purpose now is to get people to buy tickets for bright light night. So we'll be able to buy new lights for the social room. That's good. That's really our purpose. Now we're ready for the next step. Right. And while they are writing, let's think over these principles of effective writing. There are three things you should consider before writing. First, material. Become familiar with what you're going to write about. Be sure your information is complete and accurate. Second, consider your audience. What will interest them? What will they understand? Third, be clear about purpose. What effect do you want your material to have on your audience? Consider material, audience, and purpose thoroughly, then write, then edit. Now, what does editing mean? Well, let's see how Jack and Alice and Clyde handle this essential of effective writing. That's it for a newspaper story. Wait a minute. There. All right, what have you written? New lights for social room. 
This week, Principal Hanson gave his permission for new lighting fixtures to be bought for the social room. The present old-fashioned fixtures are inadequate, tending to produce glare and... You don't like it. Well, Clyde, it's all right. Except, well, it doesn't make me interested. I don't think it says the kind of things that, that matter to the audience. Maybe we'd better think more of our audience and what we want them to do. What's supposed to happen when people read this newspaper article? Well, it should start out interestingly so they'll read it. And after they've read it, let me think. We want the folks who read this to understand about the lights and the party and to become interested in bright light night. We want them to talk about it, to start making plans for that evening, to buy tickets. I guess the news story should emphasize the party more. Let's see. Here's an angle. This week, Principal Hansen bought the first ticket for Bright Light Night. A carnival of fun with music, games, and refreshments to be held in the social room October 10th at 8 p.m. Proceeds of the party will be used to buy new lights for the social room. Bright lights, bright fun is the slogan announced by the planning committee. It's an all-school carnival for an all-school project. Now it's beginning to sound right. Written that way, the article will stir up interest in the party. Wait a minute. Before you start rewriting, help me decide which sketch pen to finish. What do you think of this one? Admission tickets for Bright Light Night may be purchased here. I don't know. When I imagine that poster, I don't think anybody would bother to read it. It seems to say the right things, but... But the words aren't snappy enough to suit a poster. Not an effective poster, anyway. Maybe this one's better. Hey, gang, let's go. Bright light night. Get your tickets here. That sounds good. Can you imagine this one on the ticket booth? Well, it's snappy and interesting. People would really notice a poster like this. They'd buy their tickets, too. Because this poster uses the kind of words you catch on to right away. It seems right for a poster. It's right for our audience, and it's right for our purpose. What about material? Huh? Oh, yes. This poster isn't really complete. It ought to have the price of the tickets on it. And the date and the time of the party. Yes, it should. Well, I'll make a new sketch and make it neat. And make it complete. Then we'll have really considered material, audience, and purpose. You know, these rules are really helpful. Well, let's be sure we've applied them to my announcement. Here, this will be read in all home rooms a day or so before bright light night as a sort of a last minute reminder. Let's edit it. All right, come on, Clyde. To make it more effective. So editing means going over what you have written idea by idea and word for word, checking it with others as to material, audience, and purpose. Editing is the final essential in writing effectively. That's a good idea, Clyde. And I like your suggestion, too, Alice. Now I know how to rewrite this. It'll really be an effective announcement. All right, I'm going back to work. Me, too. Well, they're finished editing the announcement. But let's see what Jack first suggested. Last call on bright light night tickets. Get them now before it is too late. Hmm. Does that make you think about the purpose of going to Bright Light Night? Does it make you want to be part of the fun of Bright Light Night? Does it remind you of how much the social room needs to change this to this? Look at this announcement carefully. You know the essentials of effective writing. See if you can revise and improve this announcement. Edit this copy yourself. 